Hello, Jason here with Best Bonsai. And I'm going to be styling a Chinese elm. This is uh, pretty much a pre-bonsai and just repotted it in this 10 inch low profile ceramic pot. And we have our tools ready to go. Um, got my small clippers, my concave cutters for bigger branches. And uh, this tool is just little tweezers and um, this to even out soil things like that um, but nothing crazy um, mostly what I'm going to be using are the leaf trimmers and the concave cut so we have our Chinese elm here as you can see a lot of the new growth we have these nice long shoots uh, that have grown out very long and that's good because even though we're going to be trimming them back to about two or three sets of new leaves um, and trimming off probably nine tenths of their length it's good to let them grow out that long because when you do this the bottom gets thicker and becomes harder wood so when you cut it at that point it's gonna ramify it's gonna split to two new branches like this one up here did You see how you have a primary branch? Well, that's really a secondary branch. But then it splits into two shoots of new growth. Um, that's called ramification. So, to get more intricate branching structure, um, we want to trim back to two or three sets of leaves to get shorter length between the inner nodes of the branches. But we want that growth to be hardwood we don't want to cut it when it's soft green like this because it's not going to ramify it's just going to grow back so the first thing i'm going to do when we look at this tree we see we have great branch structure for an informal upright we have a branch right here to the right then the left and then up here we have our our top branches for the crown and we even have one pointing towards the back which is literally um, ideal for an informal upright but there is one problem when you're looking at it you see one branch this one right here which is coming straight at us now I can see maybe it's possible that if I turn it and make the other side the front see we don't have that problem of that branch coming straight at us and we wouldn't have to take it off but now what happens is that this top branch of the crown is coming out and to the right or left depending on what your perspective is so really it makes the crown look bad and you can tell that the shape of the by the shape of the tree that that's really not the front of the bonsai so the move here is definitely to get rid of that forward facing uh pointing branch so that's why i have my concave cutters here as you can see it points straight at us it has a really bad curve to it now what I'm hoping is that this piece I can use a little root hormone I have some really good rooting gel and possibly root this into a little Mime Japanese elm We're going to have to switch hands here for a second. Hold on. Sorry, guys. Too much typing. I'm a little crippled here. So right at the base, as flush as I can get it, I'm going to go ahead and take off this whole branch. Alright.
and then this will make a great Mime tree what I'll do is I'll spray scrape off the bark on about an inch on the bottom put some root hormone on it and plant it in one of my um, little pots over here where I have my magic bins where I have all my little cuttings where I start new bonsai trees uh, but first we need to apply the root hormone because with elms um, you know this is a rather large cutting and um, you know I want to I want to apply the root rooting gel so that it does root so going back to our tree now I'll clean that that I cut up a little more make it make it flush um, with the trunk so it doesn't stick out so much and is not as obvious but um, with my hand right now with my, with my with my wrist I'm gonna need probably two hands to do that yeah I'll just clean it up a little more but as you can see that's given us a little bit of negative space um, which actually improves the aesthetics of the bonsai because it brings out the branch structure I like it so now we need to start shortening these shoots of new growth because they're as long as I want to let them get so and I want to keep the leaves nice and miniature um, and get the branches as as intricate as possible the branching as intricate as possible you see this one has already ramified meaning it's split up there because that's where it was cut but that's way too high up so I'm gonna go back down to the second set of leaves and take it off from there that's also another good piece to root a lot smaller but I can root that anyways and start um, you know a little little tiny cutting that one day will be a tree so go through all these shoots and as long as there's hardwood at the base, I'm taking them down to two sets of, of leaves. You see here, we have new growth coming out of this branch. But the branch itself is way longer than I want it to be. So I'm going to go back to the, to the beginning, to the base, and cut it from there. So the new growth will come from that point. Have this long shoot here. This one goes forward and to the side. And remember, anytime a branch comes straight at us forward is not a good thing. So generally we want to try and avoid that as much as we can. But that's a real good piece for a cutting. Put all the ones for the cuttings down there. Because they're flying away as I'm talk as I'm as I speak.
this is coming forward at us all this growth but it ramifies very close to its primary branch rather than cutting it off right now I'm thinking about wiring this to the side but then what happens uh, going back to our branch structure we have one two and then another branch here I would rather have the negative space here so again we have a decision to make should we wire that to the side so it's not coming straight at us to keep the foliage fuller so it would look like that or take off the whole branch and then we have all this negative space I'm leaning towards taking off the whole branch right now and I would say that's the right decision um, especially because we have this branch here which is very close to this branch so we need some negative space on this side to balance it out so we're gonna go ahead and do that even though it's a great branch but it was definitely the right decision negative space is just as important <clears throat> this branch I'm not even going to keep three sets of leaves because it's growing downward and I want to get rid of it this too close to the base of the trunk we're going to clean all that off okay and also back here I have another one okay so then we have long shoots and a shoot back there growing out of the trunk it's kind of hard for you guys to see that is going bye bye okay so now this one and this one and I have one more over here now these are longer than we want them eventually but for now we're not going to cut them why i think you guys know the answer from what i told you earlier we need to let the base harden so that the first three sets of leaves where i cut it from is hardwood so that it will properly split at that point okay so now we go on to the next branch and we just continue our trimming from there
this is a really good branch but unfortunately it's a little longer than I want it so I'll take it back to here This, you have soft wood at the tip, but the base has hardened. You see at the base we have, we have hardwood. So that's okay to trim back to its third set of leaves. No problem. Got a really long one back here. And this one going down, no good. Notice how the longer the shoots get, the bigger the leaves get. So that's again an example of um, why it's beneficial to keep shorter branch length because the the size of the leaves is directly proportionate to the length between the inner nodes of the branches so if you have a very intricate branch system that splits a lot very close to the trunk it's going to have very miniature tiny leaves whereas if you let it grow very leggy and long um, the leaves will grow normal size like a regular tree so this is a very thick branch here very mature and is already ramified into two secondary branches but i do want to get a shorter branch there so it's good because we'll have some thickness at that base so thick that i'm actually going to use my concave My concave cutters here. These are getting a lot of work with all the clipping grows I've been doing. My wrist is messed up. Be careful how you type. Yeah, with me, you'd think I injured myself doing some crazy extreme sports or rollerblading or jiu-jitsu thing. No. Typing on the computer. But that's the irony of my life. All the extreme sports, I never break a bone or anything like that. And typing on my computer, I hurt my wrist worse than I've ever, uh, it's probably the worst injury I've had in about 10 years. So I have this branch here, which I can either use as an apex and wire it up and make that like the top of the tree. And that's going to be my move, actually. Yep, we're going to wire that up. That's what we're going to do. I'm not going to take it down like I was originally thinking. But I do see a branch back here that even though it has some really nice back budding happening, you can see here it's got little buds popping out. Huh, with the back budding, maybe 
I was thinking maybe it's better to leave it, but no, I'm gonna take it back to here. Because this is a hard trim. We do this so that when it grows in, the new growth comes in perfect. So even if we sacrifice a little of the aesthetics now, in the long run of the tree's uh, design, it's going to definitely be beneficial. See, this is already putting out new growth, but the first branch, my personal taste, I would like it shorter. I would like it over here, and I would angle the cut so the new growth comes in to the side versus back. So I'm going to cut it right here. Okay, now... This all has to get wired down like this. Um, and we have a lot of fine wiring to do on this tree. Not a lot of heavy wiring with heavy gauges. Uh, maybe just on this branch here, give it a little movement because it's rather straight. So I'd probably want to give it a curve down and a curve up. This branch already has a nice curve to it. I'm not going to bother wiring this. Um, this primary branch, I do want to wire a little more this way. Oh, there's two branches here. Huh. Okay, interesting. So, when you have double branches like this, in fact, they're cross branches. They cross over each other. That's bad for the aesthetics and the design of the bonsai. So, one of those branches has to go... And it's pretty obvious which one, because one of them is very large and developed. And this one, though it's fairly large and developed, is not as big as the one next to it. So, since so we don't have two branches side by side, I'm going to go ahead and take this one off. And I'll clean up those cuts with my concave cutters and my Dremel tool will do some carving and, and make them flush, shave them. And I might even apply a little lime sulfur so that they don't rot, so it seals them in. Okay, so now going back, now that I got rid of that branch that was in the way, you see what I was talking about about this branch. I need to wire it a little more towards us to make it more balanced. And then this branch, if I can, it's very thick, even though it's short. But at very least, I'm going to wire some of its secondary branches up. Or wire this branch down. So we create a little bit of space between these two branches. And get rid of that growth there. Because it grows into the other branch. I'm liking it, I'm liking it. We do have a little growth here on the trunk. I'm gonna get rid of the one that's hanging down.
normally I always would but in this case I'm gonna use it to hide that cut Yeah, this branch I do want to shorten. Again, coming at me. I don't want branches that come towards me. And that's just the general rule when you're talking about the aesthetics of bonsai. Okay, now, you can see too, as I said, the only thing we really need to do is wire this branch. Oh, it had some dead wood on it, it just snapped right off. We need to wire this branch a little up. You can see that, how it kind of has a straight line slanting downward. So we're going to give it a curve up like that. versus down like that so that's gonna complete the the crown now this branch here do do okay and one last long shoot back here so that goes about 12 sets of leaves out we're gonna take that down to here okay we got lots of great cuttings today to start some Mime Elms, huh? Need this one here. This I'm excited about because that's gonna make a little tiny tree. And I got this one. three really good cuttings and I'll continue uh, this this video I'll follow it up with the video on um, just basically starting clones so I'll show you how I scrape off about an inch of bark on the bottom and the first layer of cambium down to the white part apply some rooting gel and then plant it in uh, good potting soil mixed with perlite, something like this. Uh, whereas normally when we're doing bonsai, we use a lava rock blend like this. I'm using these days mostly just lava rock, lava rock and pumice mix um, with fertilizer. But when we're doing um, clones, when we're growing from cuttings, uh, we need a little bit of soil and perlite to keep it nice and moist. Um, the lava rock works really well for mature bonsai trees, but not so much for uh, cuttings. It's not a good substrate, at least in my experience. I don't know. Other people might have different experiences. You know, in bonsai, everything's like that. What works for one person doesn't always work for everybody or work for another. Different people have different techniques. And that's what makes bonsai awesome. I'm actually going to take... Because I have two, two branches here together. I'm going to take both of those off. Okay, and there's our finished tree.
a little more wiring to do but I'm really happy with the shape and as it grows in it's gonna look even better the more time the more time passes the better it's gonna look so that's good because the way it was going before it was starting to grow out of control the shoots were getting so long that they were just going to continue growing on and on and on um, which wasn't going to help the styling of the tree or help it have more of an intricate branch structure this way I can allow the branches to ramify oops here's another long one I missed see you always can miss one so the long one curving out we're going to take that back to here alright now I have an elm here as well this is not the front though No, this is the front. So here we have another example of one that has a forward facing branch here. With a real bad curve to it. So there that that nasty curve. I want to go ahead and get rid of that and it'll open up some negative space here. But this tree has a very beautiful shape to it. Um, but a lot of trimming to do as well on this elm we'll just go through and trim all the shoots down like that as well so that's the basics of trimming for pretty much all elms pretty much most decidus trees um, I follow that pattern and I find that it works very well to develop um, you know intricate branching structure and dense foliage All right, Jason with Best Bonsai here, and I'm going to be signing out for now. This will be followed up with a video, basic video on creating miniature bonsais from cuttings. So how to root, how to root your cuttings and clone them to create uh, mime which means under three inches um, you have mime and then shohin which is handheld and then the sizes go up from there all the way to imperial size which you would find in the imperial courtyard in japan which get to be four to six feet tall and even more so um, that's it for now thanks everyone jason signing out